Hi, I'm Mike. Springtime starts all kinds of things around here on the ranch, but one of my favorite days is the day that we bring out the old wagons on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome to Our Wyoming Life, as we bring you along to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Hit that subscribe button and make sure that you mash that bell so you don't miss a thing. I guess ordinary is a relative term. If you worked for the circus, for example, then your ordinary might be drastically different from somebody that works as a insurance adjuster. But then again, I guess it also works the other way around. I bet some insurance adjusters have seen some wacky stuff that would surprise somebody who works for a circus. If there's one thing that being here on YouTube has taught us, it's that one person's ordinary is another person's extraordinary. We see it all the time, right here on the ranch in fact. I saw it before YouTube, I just didn't know what it was. Cars slowing down on the highway, watching us chase a calf, or you're not, you're not gonna believe this, but small airplanes flying lower to see, to see us moving cows through a pasture. Our ordinary can be amazing to somebody else, and so can yours. So today I invite you to come along with me for part of an ordinary, part of an ordinary day around here. But you never know, it might be extraordinary. Once I head outside for the day, every day starts the same around here. Depending on the time of the year, chores might be different, but right now the first thing on the chore list is getting the peacock out for the day. Right now, he lives in the basement of the shop. We were hoping to have him out and about, but we have a bit of a fox problem going on. And until that problem is taken care of, he's safer down here. So each day, we bring him out and we get him ready for his day. For him, that means getting his prosthetic leg on and secured to his stump. Then he can head out to our yard, where later his girlfriend will probably come visit him. He'll stay in our yard all day, and tonight we'll put him back in his home. Back in the shop, it's time to feed the bottle calves. In about two weeks, we're going to start weaning them, but right now they're still drinking milk, which is made from a powdered supplement called Milk Replacer. Each calf will get two bottles for breakfast, and in order to make the process a little bit faster, we mix their bottles with a blender. Eight bottles are made, and then it's out to the calves with them. Each bottle is inserted into the bottle holder, which we built a few weeks ago. It still amazes me how well something so simple works. I was worried about calves stealing milk from others, but with this system, they seem to know that they each have their own bottle. And stealing isn't an issue, and all is fair. Although, it is kind of like playing Twister. Once they finish one round of bottles, then it's out with the empties, and in with the remaining full bottles, and round two commences. With the bottle calves fed, now it's time to head out to the pasture to check on cows. We'll check cows about three times a day, more if there's something going on, and we're at about 80% of the way through calving with over 120 calves on the ground now, and the remaining calves will come slowly over the next few weeks. By branding time, we'll probably only have one or two cows left to calve. Each day, I like to make sure I get out and walk around the cows. If they get used to me being around them all the time, when we do have to get close and work on them, whether it's sorting calves or cows, it makes the job a lot easier on me and the cows. So everything looks good out here. No cows appear to be in labor, and that means we have the next few hours free. Now it's time to come up with a plan for the day. And to lose the sweatshirt, it's getting hot out here. If you follow us on Facebook, you'll remember that this last winter we had an accident on the highway, right by the ranch. Nobody got hurt but a young lady went off the road, through a few power poles, and into the corral fence. 
We were without power for a few hours while the power company fixed the poles, and now it's time for us to fix the fence that was taken out in the accident. Luckily, it's an easy fix. And the reason we're doing it now is because we're going to be moving a few heifers into this corral. Currently, they're in the corral next to this one, but for our next project, we need to get in there. And we need to leave the gate open. Only three boards on the fence were broken in the accident, so we're going to replace the middle two boards first. After tracking down some lumber, it's just a matter of screwing the boards in place to hold them while we cut them to length. And then, screw them in place. Moving on to the five heifers in the corral, we can shuffle them to the corral we just fixed, clearing this corral to work in. Two years ago, I parked all of our wagons in this corral and barn. We have four of them. A covered wagon, a small buckboard wagon, a flatbed wagon, and a large buckboard wagon. You might remember this wagon from our second video we ever posted on YouTube called Our Story, where I sat right where it sits today. Obviously, we didn't get here overnight. It's been a long, convoluted journey. These wagons weren't put out last year because of the construction happening all summer long at my mother-in-law's house. Unfortunately, after sitting here for almost two years, they've been buried and they're worked into the ground. Here are our two issues for this project. This wagon is stuck and this one has the Pioneer equivalent of a flat tire. The metal rim that encircles the wooden wheel has fallen off. This might be a bigger problem than what I think, but first we're going to prep the area where we're going to put the wagons right across the highway. Mowing down some taller grass is all we need to do, and if we don't, the next time we mow, we're going to have to move wagons anyway, so it's better to take a few minutes and get a head start on it now. And now, it's time to go get a wagon. This year we're going to start small. Now maybe it's just the way my brain works, but last time I put out wagons, I went big, little, big, little. This year, we're gonna go little, big, little, big. That means that this little green guy gets pole position. Now this wagon is pretty special to me because I built it. A few winters ago, I was looking for a project to keep me busy and I found this old wagon. It was pretty beat up. All the wood on it was rotten and falling apart. I stripped it down, saving only the metal and replacing all the wooden parts and pieces, cutting each one the same as the original, then reassembling it and painting it the same color. Needless to say, it has a lot of time into it, and Gilbert loved wagons. I always felt like putting this much time and effort into restoring it was a tribute to him and a way to add our wagon to Gilbert's collection. Speaking of, Gilbert's pride and joy and the last wagon he bought has a tire issue. And before I can continue my little big pattern, we need to get it up and going. So like a pit crew on a wagon train, we jack up the wagon and get to sliding this metal ring back into place. By the way, I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but I'm going to call it what it is, a big metal ring. The wooden rim is compressed inside the ring, so our best bet is to compress it again. Lots of times when these rings were fitted, they were also heated up in order to make them expand. Now we don't have that luxury, and since we don't, we make do with a couple of clamps to compress the wood and a big hammer to try to coax it into place, which doesn't work. Without being able to remove the tire and heat up the rim, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it back on there. So I'm going to use Aaron's new favorite quote, ain't nobody got time for that. And we're going to get it on there as best as we can and get this wagon to the other side of the road and deal with it later when we have time. So off we go. And off goes our rim. Luckily, we're only going across the highway and not across the Western Plains on our way to California to hunt for gold. So we hit the road again. Next up is our flatbed wagon. Now this one was pretty special to Gilbert too. The, the story was that this wagon worked at our local train depot during the 1920s and 1930s. It was used to haul whatever was unloaded off the train, feed, baggage, whatever cargo the train might have carried. 
How Gilbert ended up with it, I have no idea. And I'm not really sure I want to know. Little big, little. And now it's time for another big. Really big. And really buried. Many years ago, these wagons were pulled by horses. Now this one is being pulled by horsepower. And almost not enough. But eventually we bust loose and we're in business. Bringing it out of the barn and into its summer resting spot. Some people might think it's silly to have these out on display, but for me, just as it was with Gilbert, I think it was all about history. Families made whole new starts to their lives in these rough riding contraptions. They rode for thousands of miles, they hauled tons of cargo, and each one served a purpose. One that was truly extraordinary. With that done, there's still lots to do. I'll work on the new high tunnel for a little bit and you can catch that in Tuesday's project list. We still have to check cows again and we're gonna feed those calves some dinner. For me, it's an ordinary day, but today was kind of special. It brought back some nice memories of Gilbert and these wagons and how happy they made him. It's Memorial Day weekend and I wanna honor all the men and women who died while serving in the US military some of my friends. I also want to honor those that they left behind, those that continue to fight, that stand up and carry on after their loved ones have given the ultimate sacrifice. Now, I know we're all aware that Memorial Day is a day of remembrance, but Congress has also established an exact minute of remembrance, the National Moment of Rem Remembrance Act, which was adopted in December of 2000. Now that encourages every citizen to pause each Memorial Day at 3 p.m. local time to remember the brave men and women who died serving this country. I don't know how many people are aware of it, but I invite you to join me in doing exactly that on Monday. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We didn't do anything that was vital to the future of the ranch, but it has become a tradition, one that I hope will continue to be going long after I'm gone. Tuesday, be sure to catch us for the continuation of the high tunnel build on the project list and Aaron is back this week with a brand new video from the garden. Check out the description of this video for a link to give you a chance to win a FLIR 1 Pro, your very own thermal imager, valued at about 400 bucks. Thanks to all of you. Have a happy and safe holiday weekend and until I see you again, Thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. <laughs>